What's up, y'all? And welcome back to Dad Needs to Talk. I'm your host, Robert, and we are here for another manga haul. But this month is going to be kind of a small one, at least small in comparison to my last couple of months. <laughs> just because I realized, well, okay, yeah, you need to slow down, Robert. You know, sometimes I'm just out here just blindly buying. I was like, oh, that looks cool. Bye, bye, bye. And then, you know, it's kind of like that uh, post clarity of like, yeah, I didn't really need that one or those. So, so yeah, so I got like got a short, sweet one uh, for y'all today. So, uh, yeah, let's just go and just dive right in. So, first off, the collection is almost complete. I found Trigon Maximum Volume 1. So... I was out and about uh, on my way to go pick up or to, to go try to find something else at a Barnes and Nobles. And there is a uh, half price books near my job. And so literally like on my route to Barnes and Nobles, I was like, oh yeah, that is around here. Let me just run in and take a look. And in the glass case, I see my boy Vash waiting for me. So with this, only one I am missing now is volume five and I will have the complete full set. So very exciting. So next up, I got ZOM 100 volume four and shout out to the homie Gemini Manga. If I can get my freaking camera and light to act right. Shout out to him for sending me this because uh, he had an extra copy and he was like hey raise your hand in the in the audience if you if you would uh like it and i raised my hand <laughs> so yeah so shout out to him um, I'm, I'm excited to, to hop into it i know i have you know i've heard like mixed things about like you know like the first three volumes were super solid which i did i have read and i did enjoy and then i heard people something like ah, volume four i don't know and volume five throw it away so i don't know I'll make my own judgment on that or whatever. So, but we, we shall see. Next up, another one. And I feel like this is kind of the beginning of, of a theme of sorts um, with some of the stuff I picked up this month. So this month, so I picked up Witches Printing Office Volume 1. So the synopsis of this one is what nerd wouldn't enjoy exploring an RPG style world? not Mika Kamiya. She was just about to enjoy her post comic market haul when fate whisked her away to a fantasy land. All Mika wants is to find a way home. So she's hunting for spells, but rather than search all over, they'll be coming to her to attend her magical book selling event, Magic Market. With a very animated catalog of guests, eccentric attendees, and an out of con and out of control lines, what could possibly go wrong? So, sounds cute. Found it at Half Price Books for seven bucks. I'm like, why not? You know, because uh, I, I the cover of it looks cute and like the feel of it just feels real nice. So I'm like, you know what? I'll, I'll go ahead and grab it. Next up. This is one that came across my timeline on Twitter and I was like, okay, I need to see what this is. It's called My Brain is Different Stories of ADHD and Other Developmental Disorders. So on the back of it, it says this intimate manga collection follows nine adults with developmental disorders as they outline their struggles and triumphs. Experience the stories of a high school dropout's new path to education, a person seeing the world through new eyes thanks to their medication, a father and daughter learning to thrive together, and more. This manga illustrates uh, diverse anxieties, but also self-empowerment and learning to navigate a world not built with everyone in mind. And so, like I so said, this just sounded just like some, something like very different, but something that I, this seems like it, it's going to be a very important and insightful read. So, um, and hey, it might, it might even you know, help me out with some with some things as well. So, um, so yeah, so looking forward to diving into that. So, these next couple that so these next two volumes 
or series. Let me see which one to start with. All right, let's start with uh, Magus of the Library. So I got volume one. Two, and I just picked up volume three the other day <laughs> when I when I took my daughter to, to basketball practice because I was like I want more of this because I already blew through the first two volumes um, and so I was like okay I need to I need to I need to have more of this series so Magus of the Library this is one that came across my or they got my attention uh last month when i had got a uh, blue period volume six because in the back of it they had like advertisements for other series and right next to witch hat atelier was magus and so i found one of the like later volume like, like like volume like four or five or whatever on the shelf that day couldn't find one but i was flipping through i was like looking at the freaking art and i was like i was like the art looks really dope Look at that. And it, it, it basically hit me with the same like artistic like draw as it did the first time I like flipped through Witch Hat Atelier. So I was like, okay, that's already a good sign. Now, as far as like what it's about. So this one is um, the magic of the written world and a small in the small village of Amun lives a poor boy named Theo. Theo, who is the boy on the cover here, adores books, but because of his pointed ears and, and impoverished life, he isn't allowed to use the village library. As he endures the prejudice and hatred of the village, he dreams of going where such things don't exist. Afzak, city of books. But one day, Theo chances to meet a Kafka, which is a librarian who works for the great library of... Afzak and his life changes forever. So this has been like a very dope read. Um, I have a review planned um, coming up in, in the coming week. Yeah, in the coming week. Um, because I read this and I also watched Ascendance of a Bookworm seasons one and two. So those issues kind of go hand in hand. But, uh, but th this so far has been like a very good read. It is a very dense read because it's, it's a lot of text in it. But I heard going into it that there was that, that, that it was a uh, really solid on world building and stuff, whatever. And they provide a lot of details on the world, how things work, the history of it, all that stuff. So definitely want to maybe put on your radar. And like I said, I'll have a review coming up soon. So the last of my physical volume, physical things that I picked up, it is another kind of isekai called Uncle from Another World. And I got volumes one and two. So I've already read volume one and I'm still pretty early in volume two. But this came across my timeline because... Uh, I saw somebody talking about it or whatever, and maybe I even just saw the title, but I also found out, oh, that there is a anime for this series coming out in the summer season. So in July, it's getting anime. So I watched the trailer. Trailer was very interesting with like, like, like the style and stuff of it or whatever. So I was like, okay, I need to find out more about this. So I don't even need to like really read the, the, the synopsis because basically the main, one of the main characters, uh, this guy here, he was in a coma for 17 years. So in the year 2000, because because the present day of the story takes place in 2017. So in the year 2000, he went into a coma. He had an accident or something, or whatever. Went into uh, fell into a coma, and during those 17 years while he was in the coma, he was isekai to another world, but. When he wakes up from his coma 17 years later or whatever, his nephew is there to greet him. Basically, it's the only family that really stuck by him or whatever. But the dope thing about this one is that he came back from being Isakata for 17 years in his coma or whatever. And he brings back all the powers and abilities that he had while he was reincarnated. So he's up here 
going into freaking like pocket dimensions to pull that stuff out of his inventory. He's flying around. There was there was a part I read where because uh, of course early 2000s, so he's learning about social media, YouTube, all this stuff, and there's a part in it or whatever where like they order something off of their version of Amazon or whatever. And it's like, crap, it's going to take forever for it to get here or whatever. He literally just like levitates and just like flies out the window. And like, what's the address? Flies to another country and back. And it's like, all right, I got it. Hey, I saved on shipping. <laughs> so a little stuff like that. But the other funny thing about the uncle is that he was, he is a Sega fanatic. Yes, that is right. Sega as in Sega Genesis, Sega Saturn. He's a big fanatic. So of course, one of the first things he asks about when he wakes up from his coma, he asks his nephew, he's like, hey, what, so what What happened with Sega during the console war? What, you know, what, what's the state of the console war? And his nephew has to break to him like, hey, it's only, you know, Sony and Nintendo around and, you know, and there's this new part, new player, uh, Xbox and yada, yada, yada. And so there's lots of references to old school Sega games and series and stuff, whatever. But it, it is like a very funny, different style isekai. Cause like I said, it, it is very dope that he brought back his abilities and throughout the story, you're also getting information and glimpses into what he went through and what he did during his time being isekai. So, um, but yeah, so very, very fun read. Um, that's another one. I'll have a review coming for, uh, whatever all I've read. Maybe I'll pick up another volume before I review it. But, um, but yeah, so I'll have that coming. And lastly, cause this is something I came, I don't remember if I ever mentioned it or whatever. Maybe I mentioned, but I didn't show it. But a couple months back, I had one hand and I picked up the rest of Saturn apartments digitally because like, you know, y'all know I was able to get volumes one and two, which are like right behind me uh, physically, but everything else is like super hard to find. Some of it's out of print. And so I was like, you know what? Screw it. I just went ahead and I just purchased volumes, the rest of the series, which is volumes three through seven digitally so and i've been like slowly like chipping away and reading through those whatever so but just figured i was like you know what i need to include that because hey i'll be biased i i, I don't buy a lot of stuff digitally or whatever so that's why it didn't come it doesn't come to mind when i'm doing my manga hauls and stuff but i was like you know what i'm gonna go and just toss it in here since the physical uh stack was pretty light this month but anyway enough of me rambling that's pretty much everything i picked up this month like i said kept it small kind of small and intimate um because like i'm trying to slow down on buying so much stuff but uh with that being said you know it's wild to think that it has been one year pretty much since i started collecting manga and seeing how far i've come in this year and uh and i'll say also just a little uh teaser for y'all be on the lookout because i have a very awesome episode of uh danny's talk podcast coming out this week fingers crossed uh with a very dope friend of mine who is a fellow manga tuber and we will be discussing our experiences with collecting manga for our first full year because they they started at the same time i did last year and so, but they have a way more impressive collection than I do. So I can't wait for y'all to see that person. And, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe we'll all vibe together and stuff. So, but thanks for checking out my manga haul. Like the video, uh, comment down below what y'all picked up this month. And yeah, be on the lookout for the podcast. So with that, I'm out. Y'all be easy. Peace.